Hello, I am the creator of the Organic Beehive channel as well as the Organic Beehive blog where I am just passionate about everything home. And today specifically, I am going to talk about homeschooling and the curriculum I have chosen for my third grader. So I've got my rolly cart <laughs> right here with um, all the books I have. And I don't want to say all the books because I generally have like a minimalist approach when it comes to, you know, even homeschooling or toys around the house and things of that nature. So if you kind of lean toward that, then this might be for you. You. I want to preface this whole video first by saying, I guess, to be careful of shiny object syndrome. So I know a lot of people come on and share their curriculum choices for the year, why they did it, and you know, those points that they bring up are really amazing. But I think that we hold a curriculum to be this like magical creature that doesn't really exist. So let me explain that for a second. I think we think that a curriculum is really there to maybe fix a behavior problem or get the child to really understand a concept that um, I think we look at curriculum sometimes as a quick fix for things that it's not really meant to be a quick fix for. So I want you to go into this video and try not to put curriculum on this high pedestal. I don't want you to watch this and think you have to change all of your plans for the year. In the end, the best thing that you can do for your child is just to finish a curriculum. Last year, I had a math curriculum. Um, I shared it in my second grade curriculum choices video and we did right start again. I did that. Um, in kindergarten and first grade, or maybe it was first grade and second grade. <laughs> but what happened was I really liked the first level and then level B, um, I don't know. We just weren't grasping the concepts. And so I basically told my daughter, you know what? We're still going to move forward for this. Obviously, this is the curriculum choice that I have on hand right now. We're just going to push through and finish it. And then next year, we'll try something new and see if it's a better fit. Um, and just because you have a curriculum doesn't mean that you have to do absolutely everything in that curriculum. I want you to view it as a tool. The reason I do like curriculum is it gives you a framework. So you have that table of contents and it shows you the concepts that are gonna build upon each other and give you like a big picture view of everything that is to come that year. And sometimes I just like to take those concepts and if I don't like that lesson for the day, I just might look up something online or maybe I have an idea that I remember um, from teaching that did better. You know, I will use that instead. But again, using the, um, you know, the framework from that curriculum. So I could probably ramble on and on. Again, curriculum is not meant to be put on a pedestal. It is a tool to help your child learn. So 
Don't get shiny object syndrome watching this video. I recommend before you watch this video too is to make sure that you know your teaching philosophy and your child's learning style because knowing those things will help you view this video a little bit clearer and to know whether my choices fit your child or not. Um, another thing I recommend doing before watching this video or looking for curriculum of your own is to create a homeschool vision for yourself because that is going to be your compass that is going to guide you into finding curriculum that fits your family perfectly because again, my family's choices and lifestyle can be very different from yours. And so again, we are not the same people. We do not have the same families. You wanna be able to pick the curriculum that is perfect for you. With all that said, here I go with my third grade curriculum choices. So when you're talking about third grade, obviously, you're still in elementary and things are a little more fun in those early years. Once you get to middle school and high school, um, you've, you've got more specific things you need to be teaching. But as far as elementary goes, the only two things that I really, really concentrate on is language arts as well as math because if you have a great foundation of those two subjects, they can build upon science and so many other topics. So those are the two that I definitely recommend. Um, I don't even wanna say recommend. Those are the two that I would concentrate on for your kids starting early and just going through because again, that is such a great foundation for so many other topics. So I'm gonna start with those two core curriculums. Um, the first is language arts and language arts is so many different things. It's writing and handwriting and reading and vocabulary and, and all of those things. For handwriting, we have the good and the beautiful, I just printed this out. Um, this is level three, but she um, she wanted to do cursive. So we are just continuing on with cursive. This is just something that she wanted. But again, if your child's not into cursive, I wouldn't even worry about that. Another thing we're doing, um, I'm trying to instill more independence from my daughter because she is uh, going into third grade and um, I think she's getting of the, of the age where she needs to be responsible and learn how to do these things on her own, um, which is a little different. So we're taking baby steps this year and one of those is you know giving her 15 minutes to 30 minutes of independent reading every day, no ifs, ands, or buts. So that's gonna be part of her language lessons, um, which again, isn't really like a curriculum, but it all comes together and you know forms what we know as language arts. And then in our morning basket, we, um, we have a read aloud for that. We also, what else? Mad Libs, Mad Libs will add to the language arts part of it, but it's just kind of fun um, for her. She loves doing that. She's learning the parts of speech. Um, and I love that because it's just in a more relaxed environment. And I find in that relaxed environment, she, and I think anyone, tends to retain information a little bit more. And then um, last year I did language lessons for today, grade two, this is grade three. And most of these um, topics are oral and I don't know, it takes about 10 minutes to maybe finish this. It's very gentle 
And again, the concepts build upon each other. So at the end of the year, I still feel like she is gaining some knowledge in this department. So I'm again, I'm doing language lessons for today. This is my father's world. And um, I'm just really enjoying how gentle it is. The next curriculum I'd like to chat about is math. That is the other core curriculum that I think is the most important thing to get your homeschoolers into um, at an early age. And so this year I decided to try Simply Good and Beautiful Math. This is, I think, the level um, three. And I've only been doing this for about a week. We just started this week. And I will say that I think this is a really good fit for us. Now, I may speak a little too soon, but I'm gonna tell you what I like about this versus Right Start. And these, I'm gonna try not to be like opinion based. These are just factual so that you can determine if this might be a good fit for you. Right Start Math, I really liked Level A. Level A was really great because it gave the kids a good foundation of place value. So then when it came to adding and carrying and borrowing and all of these things that I don't think I had a good um, base of when I was younger, it really clicked with her. So that was a strong point with right start and place value and putting emphasis on that. Right Start is very parent-led, at least those beginning levels. I cannot speak to level C and beyond, but it was very parent-led, and like I said, I am trying to get her to be a little bit more independent. They had worksheets in Right Start. The Right Start worksheets and the practice was very sporadic. So it would be a lesson that was um, parent-led and once every few days there might be a worksheet for her to do. The worksheet was very black and white so not really enticing to a child and so I wanted to find something that was a little, um, that had a little bit more practice. So. The Good and the Beautiful, I mean, it's a really thick book. Um, at the beginning of a lesson, usually there is some sort of review. It's like two questions, um, not too much to get them, keep them, you know, off track or anything. And then it goes straight into the lesson. Um, there's manipulatives, uh, there's games, let me show you. <laughs> they, with the math curriculum comes a, like a manipulative set and a cute little box. Um, and it's got like these tangram magnetic pieces, uh, looks like some little game pieces, uh, measuring tape, different dice, so the games are throughout that workbook and it'll tell you what game pieces you'll need to use for it. But, oh my gosh, um, Right Start does have really great manipulatives, but it's a lot. And so this and my minimalist personality, I liked this so much better. It fits in this little box. I don't have math pieces everywhere. So you have review, you have the concept of the day that you walk through with your child. Um, sometimes there's games involved. My daughter <laughs> loves any competition, any games. So if I make anything up in that genre, games, I have her hooked. And so with the good and the beautiful, it has a lot of puzzles, games, challenges to do. 
at least within the first week of doing this, and she is asked to do more math problems. Um, I think she does lean. Hold on. I think she's really good at math. Um, so I was a little disheartened when she didn't like the curriculum last year. Um, but I think the good and the beautiful is going to work out perfectly with, for her. So after you do the lesson, there is a practice sheet that they will do. Yeah, so there's a practice sheet. Since we're just starting off the school year um, and I don't want to overwhelm her, I usually will highlight just a few of the problems, making sure that um, she gets each of the concepts we learned that day. And then we haven't gone into reviews and activity, which is the next part. So you'll have two pages. You have lesson practice, and then you have review and activities. And as we get better at the lesson practice, I will start to do um, the review and activities um, too, to keep her brain sharp. But that's it for math. I'm really looking forward to this curriculum and, um, you know, she looks forward to it every day so far. What I love about the elementary years is you really just get to have fun with what you teach your children. So outside of the math and the reading, uh, this is where I let her choose what she wants to do. So we are doing a foreign language. Um, my husband's side of the family, they speak Spanish and I took Spanish in high school. Um, my husband knows a little bit of Spanish as well. So she leaned toward Spanish. And so we're just gonna do something really easy. Um, I just signed up for Duolingo and I'm just gonna do a gentle um, way of doing Spanish through that. Let's see what else. She wanted to do cooking this year. Her dad, my husband, is a chef and I think she just really wants to be able to help in the kitchen. And she knows basic things, but she wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that. So our emphasis on the kitchen is gonna work for our science. So I have this simple, this is from Usborn. It's science in the kitchen, and there are a number of different experiments that we are probably just gonna do once a week to learn science through the kitchen. So I'm excited to do that. These are really easy. A lot of the equipment needed is, um, you know, basic household supplies. So I don't have to put too much thought into that. And I chose to do a unit study through Campfire Curriculum. I've never used Campfire Curriculum before, but I really do like the, um, the topics that they teach um, in their curriculum. I think they had like herbal medicine. Um, they had like emergency preparedness. Um, they had professional cooking. There's, there's a range of things. And what spoke to me about the topics that they teach is their life skills. And life skills are really, really important to me. They're more important to me than remembering dates and famous people and things that I had to remember as a child. Life skills, I feel like, are going to take you so far in life. So that's why I really like uh, Campfire curriculum and the topics that they share. But we're going to do professional Professional chef, I think it's what it's called. She has no intention of being a chef when she's older. And even like my husband, who is a chef, is like, no, I'm going to deter her from doing that. Now, obviously, if that's something she loves and really wants to do, that's one thing. But it's a hard, hard profession. It's very stressful. And that could be a whole other video in and of itself. 
But what I'm going to use the curriculum for is more just teaching on cooking. And the professional chef curriculum um, has so many different levels. They even have, so when you purchase professional chef, um, you get um, ideas to teach from like early and elementary all the way up to adult. And to be honest, I do not have much experience in the kitchen. Growing up, we grew up on mac and cheese and fast food. I lived with my dad. He was a single dad. It was Three. me, kids. And I just remember him always coaching. We always had sports to play, but we were busy. And one of the things that was important to him was family dinner, which... I still find very important for my family. But but with that busyness and also the emphasis on a family dinner, making the family dinner was difficult and was hard to execute. So we had a lot of box dinners, we had a lot of fast food and things like that. So I never really had someone to teach me how to cook, let alone my dad didn't have anybody to teach him. His mother um, passed away when he was really young and so he didn't really learn either. So it's kind of like this lost art on my side of the family that I really, really want to bring back for not only my daughter, but selfishly for me, I would like to get better with it and um, I'm just, I'm really excited to learn cooking and stuff through her, through that curriculum as well. And then last but not least, I went back and forth with whether I was going to do this or not, but I decided to do um, world geography and just learning countries and cultures. I know my father's world does have a curriculum for this. My friend deterred me from it. She has a daughter a year older than mine. <clears throat> and she said it just didn't fit the grade level that it was supposed to be. It was a little over their head. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't buy the curriculum. Um, I just kind of took her word for it. And I thought since it was a fun thing, I was just going to kind of make it up on my own. Which is kind of crazy. It is, it does take some time to uh, figure it out. But honestly, in the end, if I have a read aloud on different countries, like that's good enough for me. So <clears throat> I have a reference book. There's so many books I could get on this topic, but I really wanted some reference books. So I have, this is from Usborne Geography Encyclopedia with a uh, World Atlas. And these Usborne books have like internet links throughout. So it'll be fun to um, go through this and use this as a reference for various continents and countries. We also, for um, geography, I she loves art. So I think we're gonna do a tea time once a week, whether we play games, which, hold on. I've got like um, a game for countries of the world. So I got some games for tea time and this is geograph geography through art. And this has different um, crafts that you can make from all different countries. And I think we're gonna, you know, alternate and do that for tea time as well. So I'm really excited about that. I don't have to think about it. So that's really great too. And this kind of goes, um, this goes with countries, you know, geography and cooking. I also have oh, the International Cookbook for Kids. There's two editions. This is the second. And so, you know, once a week, I think we're gonna just try and see what looks delicious and try and cook it. But 
I thought this married the two topics so well with cooking and um, countries of the world. So we've got that too. Those are some of the resources, but like I said, I'm not really doing a full on curriculum with countries and cultures. That's pretty much it. Um, like I said, I focus on the language arts and the math as our core subjects and then everything else I just kind of go well what do you want to learn I do like to incorporate a science um, if I can and some history social studies um, so the cultures and the kitchen go perfectly with that but I'm really excited for this year so that is our curriculum for the year um, yeah, I just try and be really relaxed in these early years because I want her eagerness and her curiosity to continue even as she gets older because I hate to say it, I lost that desire to learn when I was in school and it's so funny that once I got out of school it was like, now I get to pick what I read and I get to pick what I learn and I have picked up so many different skills along the way you know in my adult life and it's really fun and I just I want to keep that with her and just keep with that relaxed environment um, she's a she's a big busybody if you will she doesn't like to necessarily sit still so games and just having it be a little more interactive is a lot more fun for her. So I hope that gave you some ideas for a third grade curriculum. If you liked this video, be sure to comment and give it a thumbs up. All those little things, believe it or not, do help support my little channel and to really help get this information out to other moms who might need it. Thanks so much for watching. I make videos on everything home, whether that's homeschooling, homesteading, home making, and more. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.